In a previous episode of Garage Noise, we were able to straighten a couple nasty dents in this Dodge pickup truck. I shared with you how to pull out those dents, how to straighten the metal, fill it, and then I gave you a bunch of different tips and techniques on how to block that filler straight so you can get a flawless repair. Today we're talking about primer, how to mix, apply, and block sand your primer so you can get a beautiful looking paint job. So this is how I stir up my primer, my 2K primer, if it's been sitting. This primer mixes up four to one, so we're gonna find the four to one mixing ratio. Um, four to one for a high build primer, four to one to one for a primer surfacer. We're gonna be using it more like a primer surfacer, so we'll do four to one to one. I use it as a sealer, then you do four to one to two. The final part is the reducer. We're gonna be using this R500. I've put a 1.5 cap and needle set in this for primer. We've got this truck all taped up and ready for some primer now. As far as the gun settings on this R500, this is a low volume, low pressure paint gun, so it doesn't consume a lot of air, 3.5 to 3.9 CFMs of air. We're adjusting our air pressure down to about 22 PSI, and then our fluid volume is gonna be two turns out from close. I've got my fan pattern narrowed back just a little bit, a quarter turn from wide open. Now you notice I didn't mask off the entire truck when I'm priming, but it's not really necessary because this gun does not produce a lot of overspray. So when you're applying your primer, you wanna apply it just like paint. We're gonna put two coats of primer on this. This is 2K urethane primer. We're gonna apply the first coat. We'll let it flash off for 10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll apply our second coat. You wanna apply a nice flat coat of primer just like you're applying your base coat. You wanna overlap about 80% and you wanna keep a consistent distance and speed from the panel. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is apply a guide coat. I've just got some Duragold dry guide coat on here. Um, basically, this is to check our body work. We're gonna check our body work, make sure we have all the texture out of the primer, any deep scratches, this is going to fill those scratches and then when we block it, they'll show up. So it'll help us get this nice and smooth and also help us find any higher low areas we have in our repair. So we're going to just go ahead and spread this all over and then we'll be blocking this. And if we have a higher or low area, this is going to show with this guide coat. All right, well now we'll get some 320 grit sandpaper on a long block. So I'm gonna start out with this size block here. And then some of these areas I'll have to use a smaller, a little bit smaller block. Here we go, let's block this out. We're gonna block in an X pattern. And I'm just letting the sandpaper do the work. I'm not putting pressure on this because I want a true block. If I put pressure on it, too much pressure, then you're going to be forcing this block flat when it may not be laying flat. Okay, so we got it looking pretty good. The only area that needs a little bit more attention is right here. There's a little bit of a low spot right here and I can feel it. So. There's a little high here, so we're gonna put a thin coat of polyester glazing putty right between here. Build that up a little bit. Well, of course, we're gonna seal this before we paint it. So we won't, we'll finish it with that finishing putty and then we'll be able to seal it before we paint it and that'll seal it off from the paint. Now over here, we're gonna to switch to a smaller block, 320 grit sandpaper. This uh, panel has a natural bow to it, okay? So even though this is relatively flat in here, it kind of bows around a little bit. So we're gonna use a smaller block for the end of this. And for this here, we'll shorten the block too because we don't wanna get out into this area, into our blend area. So I'm gonna unbag this. The guide coat is gonna show you where any low areas are. So anywhere that guide coat's left behind, that's a low area. So if it blocks out flat like this, you're good to go. Wash this down with some Isopropyl alcohol. 
We're just gonna apply a little bit of glaze right there. Everything else feels really good. Okay, we're gonna tape off this body line. There's a little area I wanna fill right here too. So I'm just gonna sand this just a little bit right here. And a little bit of low right in here too. Okay, so we got a little bit of icing here. This is polyester glazing putty. It's a finishing putty. Good for small imperfections, waves, pinholes. A lot of times I'll use it as an insurance coat to make sure everything is finished with this because it's really easy to sand, lightweight, and does a real good job of cleaning up imperfections. It's made by USC. It's called icing. I'll leave a link in the description if it's something you're interested in. We got a small spreader here. Just gonna get a little bit on the spreader and I'm gonna lay it this way. I'm gonna use 320 to block this out. It should block out relatively easy. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of 180, and then we'll go over it with a 320. Oops, that's 80. This is 180. Now back with the 320. Okay, while that's drying, let's go ahead and sand this complete door with 600 grit sandpaper, prep it out for our blend and our clear coat. So I like to use 600, but you can use 800. I like it because it's coarse enough for a good adhesion, but it's not gonna leave a deep scratch that's gonna show up underneath your paint. Now, far, as far as a hand sanding, I use a couple different products like the Sunmite Flexible Sandpaper and this 3M Ultra Fine Foam Pad. Those are make it real easy to get those edges and get those all sanded properly so you have good adhesion. All right, we just need to clean up this edge a little bit. It's all nice and straight now. Okay, here's a tip for you guys. Sometimes with these different types of colored fillers, it makes it hard to see some deep scratches and makes it hard to see these body lines if they're, if they're accurate or not. So what I like to do is I'm just taking some 70% isopropyl alcohol and I'll wet it down like it's totally wet and then you wanna look at it in the light. Let me show you what I mean here. I'm just gonna load this down and now in the light, you can see how straight it is and you can see if there's any deep scratches or any weird edges that you might have missed. This all looks pretty decent, so I'm pretty happy with that. So we'll wipe this down and we'll finish prepping out this panel for our paint and our clear coat. Okay, so because this is white, and I noticed when I was wiping this down that there's some deep ground in dirt in this color and it shows as a smear. So if I paint and clear over that, it's gonna be there forever. So what I'm gonna do to remove that is I'm gonna wipe it down really well with lacquer thinner. I'm not gonna go over the primer because that'll take primer off, but over this 
sanded paint, I can wipe it down with lacquer thinner. I already did it once before I sanded it, but we're gonna do it again because I still see some ground in dirt. Use a paper towel for this, but in this section here where we're doing our clear coat, clean it with some thinner. This will remove some of those dirt smears, anything that's gonna be trapped or that you don't wanna get trapped underneath your clear coat. And take a good look at it. And it's hard to see. This is most important on white. Really the other colors, you can't see it. Even if you do have a dirt smear, but on white, it will stand out like a sore thumb. Usually first thing I'll do on white is buff it. Listen, if you found this video helpful, give me that big thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And don't miss next week's episode when we finish up this Dodge pickup truck. I'm going to paint a base coat, clear coat finish. I'm going to share with you everything you need to know to lay down a beautiful looking finish. We'll do it with this Segola 3300 GTO with a new cap and needle set. So stay tuned for that. Listen, I appreciate each and every one of you watching, and we'll see you next time on Garage Noise.